If you've ever fallen on hard times, or suffered a serious injury, or even just posted a sob story on Facebook, odds are you've had a friend or family member reach out and say, I'll pray for you. To many people, prayer is a great comfort, both to the recipient and the person doing the praying. That's a wonderful thing by itself, but it also raises the question, is that all that prayer does? Is it just a way to comfort yourself and others? The interesting thing about prayer is that it's fairly unique among spiritual topics in that it can, to an extent, be measured. Let's take a look at the Harvard Prayer Study, the largest prayer-related experiment yet conducted. The goal was simple, to discern the effects of intercessory prayer, that is, prayer on another person's behalf, on patients recovering from coronary artery bypass graft surgery. The team involved with the experiment, known officially as the Study of the Therapeutic Effects of Intercessory Prayer, or STEP, was composed of investigators at six different academic medical centers around the country. The team chose this particular type of heart surgery because it's fairly common among Americans, with 350,000 procedures a year, and because stressful surgeries such as a bypass are prime reasons to receive prayer. The STEP team enrolled 1,802 patients from the six hospitals and randomly assigned them into three distinct groups. The first group, consisting of 604 patients, received prayers after being informed that they may or may not be prayed for. The second group consisted of 597 patients and did not receive prayer after being informed that they may or may not receive it. And the third group consisted of 601 patients who received prayer after being informed that they would receive it. Caregivers and auditors comparing case reports to medical records remained unaware of the patient's group assignments throughout the study. The researchers also decided to incorporate multiple denominations in the study, but ended up with only two Catholic groups and one Protestant group, as the other denominations could not make the time commitments required for the multi-year study. You may be thinking, hey wait, everyone prays differently. Won't that spoil the experiment? That's a good thought, and the STEP team addressed it. They standardized the beginning of the prayer and its duration so that all the patients would receive roughly equivalent prayers. The STEP team provided only the patient's first name and the last initial to all the prayer groups. Prayer began on the day of the surgery and continued daily for two weeks. The results? In the groups who were informed that they may or may not receive prayer, groups 1 and 2, Complications occurred in 52% of those who received it versus 51% of those who did not. Complications occurred in 59% of patients who were told they would receive prayer versus 52% who also received prayer but were uncertain of receiving it. Major complications and 30-day mortality rates were similar across the three groups. The results show that prayer had no effect at all on the outcome of the procedures. If anything, the patients receiving prayer fared slightly worse. What does that mean? Is prayer useless as a tool for healing? Well, yes and no. There's a lot to be said for emotional support and positive thinking. For many, prayer is a powerful way to show love and support. Now, the researchers conducting this test were very careful to explain that the study had no interest in proving or disproving the existence of God. They were simply interested in prayer. Father Dean Merrick, one of the co-authors of the study, said, Our study was never intended to address the existence of God or the presence or absence of intelligent design in the universe. The study did not endeavor either to compare the efficacy of one prayer form over another or to assess participants' understanding of the nature and purpose of prayer. Finally, it was not our objective to discover whether prayers from one religious group work better than prayers from another. In addition, the STEP team did not ask family and friends to withhold prayer during the study, nor did they expect the patients to refrain from praying for themselves. This kind of test is interesting because it takes a central tenet of religion, something which is usually very hard to qualify and quantify, and measures its effects in an organized way. There are many people, my wife and friends included, who say this sort of test is worthless because you can't put God in a test tube and expect him to act as our researchers want. A valid point, perhaps, but what should we make of the results? In my opinion, if you're inclined to pray, continue to pray. It will raise your emotional state and presumably that of the recipient. As to whether the words fall on empty space or a divine creator, that's a personal matter. For the people who are not surprised by the results, don't go parading around bullying people who are inclined to pray. But maybe gently suggest a personal visit to the hospital or a handwritten letter in addition to the prayer. Something tangible to the recipient. At the end of the day, prayer is what you make of it, just like any other form of positive thinking. Use it or don't as you please, but respect those with differing beliefs either way, and do your best to provide comfort for others however best suits you. If you enjoyed this video, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking here, and you can check out my previous video by clicking here. Feel free to leave a like or comment below, and I'll do my very best to respond to you. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.